But I remember I was in the gym with my girlfriend at the time. We were both working out and I was on the stair climber and there was a plant in the corner and I really looked at it and I did that and I like, you just get overwhelmed with like you start happiness and it. energy. Yeah. Whoa. And it was, it made it real for me. Prior to that, mm. I was just like, it's a great concept. And then that made it real. I was like, so I'm kind of like just coasting through life, not really paying attention yeah. to shit. Welcome everybody to him. That is not a poll. Do not count that as a poll. It counts. Okay. That counts. I mean, it it, it just came, dude. Yeah, but we didn't even say anything. We didn't do it, anything. So it's it a message happened. for us. It's like telling us, guys, chariot and page upside down, guys. Come on. Get focused here. What do these mean? Book do it. Know? Pull out the book. Let's see it. <clears throat> this is a little out of the ordinary, guys. I'm sorry, but sometimes... Destiny just smacks you in the face. The chariot. Ooh, this is good. All right, so the chariot. What suit like, would that be? This is a. This isn't a suit. Special? This is a big boy. Yeah. So this is like the face card. It's like a. This would the be major arcana. Uh, so it's a five, six, seven. Lucky number seven. Look at that. No, lucky number seven pops up, and then. The upside down page of swords, <coughs> intellect kind of going the chariot. out there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Controlling opposing forces, mm -hmm. willpower, resolving mm -hmm. conflict, travel. The chariot often depicts a strong male figure holding the mm -hmm. reins of mm -hmm. two horses or sphinx-like beasts, one black and one white, signifying opposing forces. Wow. Sometimes the beasts are unicorns or other mythical creatures like Pegasus, mm -hmm. the winged horse, or griffins. In the Rider Waite Smith deck, the charioteer is armored and carries a scepter, suggesting he is in the service of royalty. In some decks, he holds no reins. He uses sheer no willpower range. to keep his steeds moving mm, together in a forward willpower. direction. This shows mastery of opposing forces and control mm -hmm. over inner conflicts. At a literal level, the chariot relates to travel and transportation. Travel. Like Upright. It. There's a whole lot here. Upright. The chariot symbolizes taking control of competing forces. I, mean, I think we get it. It's that's Whether what these it are inner conflicts, people, or situations mm -hmm. in your life. This is talking about right now. You got the reins. You got two things trying to pull you different directions. It's like, actually, we're going straight, baby. And they're like, oh. And then we got the swords upside down. Pa page. The page. Upside. That's like the, the prince or something. 136. It's like you're uh, starting off maybe something new. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, there he is. Study, vigilance, apprehension, inexperience, curiosity, mm. a message. A message. Hmm. Pages represent study and, and this. Wait, wait, pause, let's just pause for a second. Mm -hmm. So this card came first, right? And this card says like, it, it could mean a message, right? Mm -hmm. And then afterwards I go, oh look, a card came. And I thought this is the card, the message card. And then under the message card was message. the chariot. Yeah. That was a message. So I feel like that's what it is, but we can still read this. Well, let's hear what it's about. That's how I'm feeling it. Upside down. Mm -hmm. Despite your intelligence, you may lack clarity or direction in life. When this card appears, it may indicate irresponsibility, idealism, impracticality, or mm. frivolousness. Ooh, Sometimes it suggests a narrow or rigid worldview that prevents new information from coming in. Mm. If the reversed page represents a person you know, it could be a young and experienced individual oh. or someone whose limited life experience and blinkered attitudes leaves him or her at a disadvantage. Mm, we're just talking about your buddy at the bar. That's <laughs> him to a T. Wow. But I think it's more the messenger for the chariot. But yeah, I mean, interesting. But yeah, that is true, you know, about me for sure. I can be idealistic and, uh, you know, it's like, how do you do it though? It's like. You know, which Absolutely. is true. Though. But the thing is, though, if yeah. everyone did just love, it would work. So I mean, it's not wrong, but yes. it's just like, how do you make idealistic? Them do it? How do you make them do it? How do you make them love? You better love me. Force them. <laughs> Force them to love. Force me. the love. Mm -hmm. That's the way. It's like the chariot. You pull the love over here and you smash them with no reins, though. Oh, just with just willpower. You just, just willpower. You're just like your presence. It's just so strong. No rings. Your belief is just so, you're just like, this is happening. 
period. That's it. I like that. You can just kind of use your willpower to change the world. It's like you don't even need words. You just have will instead. Whoa. That's way too deep. So you don't even need words if you have will, technically. Will over words. Mm. Damn, that's big. <laughs> that's real, too. Will over it words. Is. You heard it here first. Will over words. Harmonious chaos podcast. <laughs> MC2, <laughs> the laughiest guy in the world. The guy loves to laugh. He's just a little laughy I'm guy. I'm happy. He's a happy guy. I'm always happy. P Funktastic. I think I'm happy, but it's not like this guy. Never like me. <laughs> this Never guy like is a happy, happy. So, yeah, we're, we got another episode here for you guys. Random cards came out of nowhere. You saw that. I hope that was on camera. Oh, that was page camera. dropped. I'm like, oh, a nice page. Cool. What's this? A message? Hmm. Can't script that, guys. I mean, that's destiny. Right there. And welcome, everybody, to another episode of Harmonious Chaos. Oh, we're doing MC2? two intros. Okay, we're nice. Ten. This is our own shit. I'm MC2 as P Funk Tastic. That's right, baby. Now, we were talking before. Well, pause, pause. Oh. Welcome, guys, to Harmonious ah. Chaos. I'm MC2, and that's P Funk Tastic. Reverse card. Yeah. I like Try that. We were talking before this episode about Freud, mm. Jung, Eckhart Tolle. Ooh. And we were talking about how being present to the moment is so important mm -hmm. in your day to day. We talked last mm. episode about depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. and P Funktastic brought up, well, MC2 now. Brought up a good no, point. No, I'll stick. I'll go back. I like. I like my Your old P -funk? name. Your P Funk. P Funk yeah. brought up a good point that if you're present, because in the book, The Power of Now, presence is the cure all. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think it's best if you go into detail about why, though. Why is presence so important? Why is presence so important? Why is it cure anxiety? Why is it cure okay, depression? Okay, 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 okay. All of it. So, it's right there in the title of the book. The best thing about the power of now is that you don't need to really know anything except for one word and it's now and if you can wrap your head around now it's like oh everything's fine wow look at that because when you think about it all of your problems are when you're taking your brain and you're taking it away from now and putting it out into some magical fairy tale place right you're either going into some beautiful future some horrible future some imagination world that's not even earth that could be anything a conversation from last week that you already had but you want to make a new version of it in your head mm -hmm. somehow and Those somehow it's going to give arguments. you some you know yeah. so there's you know people get depressed when they're thinking about the past you know mm -hmm. it's like oh i shouldn't have done that or they shouldn't have done that or blah, 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 blah. or even thinking positively about the past oh i miss that oh yeah oh you're, that you're was such a great time and if i walk by and i say hey how you doing you're just mm -hmm. i'm like hello you're not here you're, you're not, not here. now so he the way tole calls it he basically says there's two ways you can be basically mm -hmm. right you can either be here and present and now or you're unconscious that's pretty damn so accurate. that's unconscious so like because if you talk to somebody and they can't hear you, are they conscious? No. They are somewhere else. They yes. might physically be next to you. But they're not here. But they're not here. with you. Mm -hmm. Like I've had people be like, I'm here, I'm here. I'm like, you're, you might be standing here, you're not but actually. you're not here. You're somewhere else. I don't know where you are, but you're not here. You know? Yeah. So all the problems of the mind are caused from imaginary non nonsense but non nowness you know a lack of presence yeah so so whenever anytime you're having any sort of negative thought you have to understand it's the thought that's triggering this bad feeling you're not just mm -hmm. like oh I just feel bad every day for no reason whatsoever I'm just always sad there's no reason there's literally just no reason no there's always a reason mm -hmm. there's several reasons right but I just lost my train of thought, so now you're going to pick up but right now. when you say, oh, I'm sad, mm -hmm. is it you? Is it you? Is it you that's sad? Okay, you're not sad. No, no, no. 
you're experiencing sadness. Uh-huh. Ah, okay. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Cartel, I remember. I you was remember uh, that, yeah. I was in my car when I was driving, listening to the book, in, mm-hmm. and he was talking about how you are never, you are never anything. You mm-hmm. are only experiencing mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. through, I believe he, 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 he separates somehow, he separates like you from your feelings and your thoughts and yeah. your body. Because you are the soul, if you want to get like religious with it or whatever. You're yeah. the, you're the, he says you're the observer. You're the mm-hmm. one who watches the thing happen. Or if it's the video game analogy, you're the one playing the game. You're not the character. You're not the mm-hmm. sim. You're the guy on the computer. And the guy who made the computer, anyway. But like, yeah, you're not, you know, it's, it's a separation from all this. So the feelings that the MC2 is feeling, he I, he's feeling those. And you could say the same thing. Yeah, he is feeling those. Mm-hmm. I am experiencing MC2 feeling those things. Like, mm-hmm. that's really what it is, you know? Yeah. And See, he actually had a, he had a, a great practice. And I just remembered it now while we're talking about mm-hmm. it. And I used it. Mm. And it helped me immensely. And I think there was just such a such a period of positivity and goodness in my life that I forgot. Right? Because you only remember these like these fixes to anxiety or depression or fixes to being sad when you're sad and you're looking it up and all that stuff when you're experiencing it. Okay, pause it. Gotta pause you there. Because that's the problem. This whole thing isn't a little quick fix. It's not like a oop. Use the power now and get, get out of my jam and now I'm good. No, no, no. It's like, this. that's how it really is. No, no, no. I'm saying this This one practice that I'm about to say is to fix okay, when okay. you're sad or whatever. But I just want to say that the whole power of now the power is like of, it's a mindset. Oh, yes. It's not even just a mindset. It's just the way things really are. You need to you be You have to presence. always have that in always have that. Like, that's not just a bring it here and leave oh, it. Oh, absolutely. Just that becomes... But the greatest way, yeah. the greatest way, the way that I was able to bring myself to that presence Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. while dealing with whatever I was dealing with at the time is he says to recognize the feeling and recognize that it's 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 your brain or something Mm. trying to protect you Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. saying oh I see what you're doing there Uh I see that you're trying to help me thank you thank you but we don't need we're good now bro and yes, that actually yes, saying dude. it enough mm-hmm. flips the switch. It mm-hmm, really does. Like mm-hmm. the first couple times, you're like, "Oh, this is bullshit," but then after a few times, you're like, "No, I'm really you good." Find Don't out worry it's true. About yeah, it. it's real. It's like it's like I am good. Yeah. I see what you're doing here. Like I, like I, I'm worrying about this thing. So I understand why you're putting anxiety through my head. But I'm good. I don't need that. Yeah. And ten, Thanks though. 10, Appreciate 15 it. Fifteen minutes yeah. later, you're uh-huh. completely fine. Oh yeah. And that and then, literally got me out of so many mm-hmm. bunks and all that. And then the thoughts start coming less frequently. And yes. then when they do, they're less powerful because mm-hmm. they like, okay, good, 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 good. Yeah, exactly. I think of it too as, as almost like your inner child or like yeah. little you, like all scared of everything. Mm-hmm. Like this is that, watch out, watch out. And you're, you, have, you have to become your own father. And it's like, yes. it's okay. It's good. Mm-hmm. Daddy's here. Okay. Just relax. You know what I'm saying? I got you. And it's like. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's really what it is, though, if you think about it, because that makes total sense. Your all, your entire mentality, the way you think about everything, is built from when you were a child to now. When you're so child, a lot you're of your irrational you fears, on other people. Yeah. Yep. So a mm-hmm. lot of your irrational fears, like for example, the fear of talking to strangers, or mm. being outgoing, yeah. or like taking up space Don't as a talk person. Talk to strangers. <laughs> yeah, you get taught that, like. Uh, one of the people that I, one of my mentors said that like when you're a kid and you're in a restaurant and you, and you're loud, mm. when you're talking and you're loud, your parents, your parents scold you mm. and that like scares you, quote unquote, mm. scares you. So then as an adult, you don't want to take up space. You don't want to mm. be loud in public because you don't want to, you, you, you correlate being loud in public with, with being thing. scolded. Mm-hmm. So you just never did it. You shut it down oh. and then you bring that into adulthood. And a lot of our irrational fears stem from childhood trauma like that. Mm-hmm. And that's like what you were saying. When you learn to be like, I hear what you're saying, but that's not really going to help me here. We don't need We've that. We've already gone over this before. Yep. It's We covered it already. Thank you, but no thank you. Mm-hmm. And you essentially are telling your younger self, We've grown. Yeah, we don't need that anymore. Yeah, 
Yeah. That's crazy. And it, and he learns and he'll learn. Yeah. And eventually it'll just like, you're good. Cause you think of all those yeah. irrational fears, like there are fears that stem from so many things. Like I, to this day, actually, I like my birthday. I, I, I don't know what the fear is of this. I don't know where, where the childhood trauma is on this, oh. but like my birthday, I do not think of it as a big deal. And my younger brother, just I recently know. had a birthday I know why. and he had like you know he had like 10 people over came to the house da, da, da. and like for me it's like my birthday i would be completely fine if nobody recognized it was my birthday mm -hmm. and just skipped by the day oh yeah i took it off my facebook page yeah it's it, but it's crazy because yeah. there are people that genuinely love celebrating their birthday and making a huge deal out of it mm -hmm. and then there's me that's just like nah. i think they both come from the same place actually you think so because it's both the same fear of no one's gonna remember my birthday or no one's gonna care about my birthday. Okay. On the big party side, it's like, it's my birthday, it's my birthday, it's my birthday. Everyone's gonna know it's my birthday. I'll throw my own party if I have to. Mm -hmm. No one's gonna forget my birthday, guaranteed. And then the other side, it's like, well, if I make sure to like downplay it into the dirt and if I kind of make it so that no one does show up, that way if everyone f forgets about me, then it's all good that way too. It's about the Damn, fear. that's real, because you're probably right. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, because I remember when I was a kid. I what don't know if I no talked about up? this on the podcast before. I used to be, like, the biggest, the biggest fucking loser in high school and middle no, school. you keep saying that. I, no, I, I no, was no. a, you gotta I was a quote-unquote nerd. All right, but let's, can we rephrase the way you say that into something different? How? People thought of me as or something. Because you you're saying I was. So you're accepting no, I, 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 I can honestly, I can honestly say that... I mean, due to the amount of immense growth that I've gone through over the past like ten years, I'm I would not want to be my former okay. self. Ever. So if you saw him, I you would, would say okay. I I was a loser. So, okay, so if you saw yourself, you would say you're a loser. You would mm. do that? Ah, uh, no, I guess no. Not. What would you say? Because it hurt my feelings when I got called. Yeah, a loser. what would you say to him? You said right, standing right there. I would tell him that there's nothing to be afraid of to talk to yeah. people. And but he, that doesn't change who I was. Fault. I was he, a loser. Yeah, but he didn't know any better at the time, though. How would he know that shit then? He did. He was just nervous. Well, he had reasons to be nervous, didn't he? Not really. Childhood trauma. He was trauma. nervous for no reason? Childhood trauma. He got made fun of as a kid. Okay, so that made him nervous. Yeah. So that so that's a, that's something. Yeah. It's a loser, though. All right, whatever. I mean, I, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be me 10 years ago now. Nah, see, the label loser is just a... a a shit term. I think it's a great. T I, I think to be honest, name calling and bullying is a very effective thing, and I it think needs to happen. Nah, I think trash. it needs to happen because trash. how soft people are now because bullying nah, is such a. You're bad just thing. putting more negativity in the world. That's trash. But it's, it's a like, it's a way it's to like cultivate the ends a, justify the means. It's like there's two ways to help somebody. There's the the trash way and the mm -hmm. nice way. They both will help them. One a little worse than the other. But at least I'm helping them. It's like nah, you can do it the nice way. You don't have to do that shit. You don't need to yeah, put the negativity in there. You can do I it guess. without it. That's the cheap, lazy way to do it. But I also feel as though, and I could be wrong, but I feel as though because I got made fun of as a child for being overweight, because I got made fun of as a child for being antisocial, because I got made fun of for having loser friends, it sculpted Not me loser today. Loser friends, they well, were just uh, nerdy friends, like <laughs> friends with <laughs> different different likes than the quote unquote norm of my uh, age group at the time in high school. Oh, but that's okay. That's okay yeah, because it's a band's name. That's why well, it's that's okay. Good, like they were literally outcasts are people who are outcasted. Like losers mean like you competed in something and you lost. They weren't competing. They're just living their lives. They're not losing okay. at anything. So I was an outcast. That's fair. All right. Um, if I wasn't called these things and went through the, I wouldn't be who I am today. Of because course, of I, course, I care about my appearance now so much because when I was younger, I wasn't attractive or appealing at all right. to the majority of You're women. I mean, have you seen huh? how you look now? Yeah. It's not good. Couldn't be any better <laughs> if I tried. This is 10 out of 10, let me tell you. But I think, though... But Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Um, that and then like me being into fitness and like really trying to like get my fitness down and mm -hmm, dieting mm -hmm. and socializing and being out there and all of that stuff stems from the fact that I didn't have it as a child and I was ridiculed for not having it as a child. Mm -hmm. So it helped me grow immensely. So 
the bullying kind of did help. Would I have done the same thing if I was like positively guided? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know because I only right. grew up one okay, way. So forget about, I mean, that makes sense. I get that. But think now about the next generation and think about, again, younger you. And mm. what, how would you want someone to have taught you back in the day? What style would you have wanted well, to help you the most? So we could, we could actually run it a step further into a realistic. Mm -hmm. How would you raise your son? Right. Okay. Be specific. Be and more we specific had than that. we had this conversation. My son is going to be raised horrendously. Yeah. You you don't you just don't get it, dude. You no, 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 no. Because listen, listen, listen. And it, I mean, it, it, it is you're true, saying right? put him through the gauntlet. No, kind not of. not the gauntlet per se, right? I'm not gonna like talk shit to my son, but like my son is going to. I'm go. I'm going to. One thing I am going to do that. I never got that I think definitely will help in all aspects. I'm going to put my son in like sports like mm. boxing, soccer, football, look like a lot of sports mm -hmm. to have that socializing well, let him, aspect. And let him try what he likes too. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's one thing that I didn't have. Like kids and granted, like my parents raised me well. But like a lot of kids went to summer camp. A lot of kids went to like travel oh, yeah. soccer. Summer camp's good. You got to attend yeah. summer camp for sure. I'll, summer camp's the best. Oh, and yeah. like with me, I had like, I didn't play. I played soccer in the summer for like a month or mm -hmm. two months. And other than that, that was it. There were kids that were in travel. Well, we didn't have a lot of right. money. You know, my family wasn't true, wealthy by true, any means. True. But like, I, that's one thing. I would want my son to be doing, you know, boxing, soccer, football, like all these different sports to be around kids their own age. Because without that, uh, without be being acclimated to other kids, you become antisocial mm -hmm. because you're only used to talking to, mm -hmm. like me, I was only used to talking to my brothers, my mom, my dad, and like family, that's it. So now, when I'm around my brothers, my mom, my dad, I'm good. But like when I'm around other people, not now, but like it's previously, more awkward and shit. you're, yeah, you're Whatever. nervous. You're like, oh, well, what if I say something stupid and get judged? Mm. But like, I can say the most ridiculous shit to my brothers and not give a fuck. So like, and that's the real you. That's the thing. That's like the secret to, to like becoming your true self, kind of. You gotta like remember that version of yourself because mm -hmm. that's the real you, and then bring it out in real life and just test it out on people, and you'll notice that people like it mm -hmm. more than because you're the, being more genuine. Yeah, more than the let me not touch hurt anybody's mm -hmm. feelings type shit. And then the more you practice it, the more you realize like, oh yeah, like. Not only do I feel better expressing myself, people like it better too. Like it's all good for everyone. There's all these worries, again, back to the power of now, all these, cause you're like, if I say this, they'll say that and they'll all laugh. Okay, I won't do it. Or if I do it, you know, you're creating all mm -hmm. the bullshit to stop yourself. Yeah. So you feel worse cause you're stopping yourself from doing what you really want to do. And when you actually do it, it actually feels better too. It's like a win-win. It's really just that thought that gets yeah. you every time. I was watching a video earlier um, and the guy, he was, he was public speaking. And he was saying that being your genuine self instead of be worrying about being someone that everyone likes, mm -hmm. it it makes it so that the people that do stay stay Are for you, ones. and yeah. the people that don't stay weren't meant for you anyway. Because when you're being genuine to yourself, eventually mm -hmm. you're going to be mm -hmm. genuine to yourself, right? So me and you, we've known each other for ever. We've known each other for like the past like ten years, now. at least. Not even. I don't know. Something. I started I started at Sprint when I was like twenty twenty one. I think I met you at like twenty one. Okay. Now I remember I had my first drink with you. Did you? At Fridays. Yes. <laughs> when I was 21, I went to Fridays. Don't drink, guys. It's bad. It, I used uh, to have it. Well, I was going to say, I had, a, I had an alcohol tattoo here. I get rid of it, just so you know. That's right. Well, that said you booze, you lose. But yeah. anyway, there was other reasons behind that, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, but, yeah. So the person that I am today versus the person that I was when I met you, when I met you, I was putting up a front. Mm. But over time, you end up figuring out who I am because you're around me so much. I'm comfortable yeah. around you. I See said shit around you. Secrets. I, I say shit around you that I say around my brothers. Oh, I can tell when you're pulling out real Mike once yeah. in a while. It's like, oh, absolutely. Oh, oh, there he is. I'm like, this guy is an asshole. I'm like, bro, you yeah. got to relax, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but like, that's the thing. Eventually, whether it's a significant other or a friend from a long time, you're going to eventually put out the real you. And why not just do it off rip? Yeah. And then you filter out. The people that and you get aren't rid of the like ones you, who exactly, and then you find the people that mm. are gonna like you, and that's how you 
then, cultivate relationships. And that's how you end up with friends that aren't your friends. Right. Exactly. You got to fake it around them. And all then the time. once you change to your, once you start acting normal, they don't like you anymore. It's like they didn't they, they didn't like you the whole time. No. They just like they like this to fake you. Fake you. They didn't like the, the soul of mm-hmm. yourself. Like just like I like the facade. Yeah. Or and that's the thing too. If you think about it, when you're when you're being a person that you're worried about everyone liking you, you're really being like a watered down version of a person mm-hmm. anyway. And you're just a phony. Because you don't want to offend anybody. You don't want to say the mm-hmm. wrong thing. So you're saying things that are just universally liked. And mm-hmm. when you're doing that, you really don't have an opinion. And that's how society got to the way it is. That's why everybody, that's where all these sheep came from. That's the birth of the sheep right there. We did it. And that's how we can we beat figured it. Figured it out. Right? Yeah, we need people to voice their own opinions and not be worried about being liked. Everyone's so scared about what everyone's going to say that they're and just say the, the good, the right thing, and that no one's ever afraid of themselves. Mm-hmm. But once you do become yourself, it's like way better. So maybe, maybe. So everyone's going to all along. Grow. Yeah. Grow. Yeah. Wake up. Yeah. And take cold showers. Yeah, finish cold, guys. Come on, um, be smart. But be maybe smart. all along, the people that had it right were the quote-unquote losers in school. Because they were doing the different shit. They weren't following They were just the... doing what they wanted to do, mm. and it just wasn't cool. Yeah. But That's they why... were the ones that were being genuine and to themselves. And some of the coolest people were like the biggest nerds in high school and stuff. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I was... All the popular kids in school, they all liked the same things, did the same things. Mm-hmm. And then like... You know, you got those and couple get, people yeah. from the school that, like, just blossomed into, like, this social... Bro, I will never forget. There's one girl from high school who... Mm, there's always one. Uh, in elementary school, she was a nerd, didn't have a lot of friends. Middle school, same thing. And then she came. She went to another school and came back oh. senior year. Bro. She was... She grew up, Like, huh? a max... <laughs> she literally was a maxim model. Oh. A maxim model. In your high school. And she was quiet and nerdy. And it's like, mm. oh, now you're getting all these attention from the guys and that never gave you attention back in the day. Yeah, because she wasn't hot from her whole, yeah, from so the she, rip. She didn't get poisoned by the mm-hmm. I'm so great, super conceited type stuff that sometimes oh. happens with mm-hmm. attractive people. You know, it's like you start to think that they're like, you know. Yeah, she was on the uh, like Barstool Smoke Show, mm. Maxim, like model page. Like, bro, I'm talking like yeah, okay, 15 out of 10, like. Man, she was a, a a little nerdy girl that was like friends with all the nerdy girls in school, and then she just showed up one day and like all the popular kids liked her. And I'm like, wait, oh, oh, Who, we you, didn't like her before. Why? Why do we like her now? Because she's hot. Because she's hot. Duh. Oh, so it has nothing to do with what you like or any of that. That's different with her though, because she just actually had like a physical transformation. Normally, right. But what I'm saying, really what I'm saying that. is, none of the shit's actually important. Like, trying to conform doesn't matter. At all, because those Mm-mm. views and opinions can change so quickly, so quickly. And then you're just following it's the thing, fake. so it's just like, okay, I like big red boots now, and I'm just like the, boot oh, the boots, looking booty. Look, everyone, look at me. Everyone likes me. Look, I got the boots. So like, the boots are out. And then the boots are out, and then you gotta buy the new thing, and you're just always buying the new thing, and you're mm-hmm. just a slave to the thing, and you're getting this fake like. It's just like, oh wow, that person's got a bunch of money to waste. That's cool. I guess they're rich. Maybe they'll buy me a. You know, Not, something. Yeah. And then people just come that's at you for money. That's what social media is for. And it's like, great. Yeah, I want to. That's another thing. Like, do you really want everyone around you just like coming at you for money all the time? Or only being your friends because like they think they can get stuff from you and stuff? No. Like all of a sudden you're going to have these new friends coming around like, yeah, blah, 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 blah. It's like, where were you before? You know? Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. you got to. I mean, you got, I feel like prior to the money, if money is your end goal, it's not. That's prior no to the money, goal. that's trash end goal. Prior to the money, you need to. Prior to the any any type of success at all, assume uh, when this when this podcast just blows the fuck up, right? Mm-hmm. When we are household names. Prior to the money, the success, whatever, you need to already have your group kind of of course set up you got to have a core because once you become successful in whatever it is you're trying to do, people are going to gravitate towards oh, you yeah. because of the success. Because they want something from you. Exactly. And it was... Uh, Not because they want to help you. Oh, I just want to help him because he's my yeah. buddy. Even some of your real friends are going to be like, yeah. well, I kind of want to get the, give me the money. Yeah, really. Tyson, Tyson used <laughs> to talk about that in the... Tyson mm-hmm. talks about that in his podcast. He was on top of the world and he had a million friends and a million girls. And then he went to prison 
and Ooh. no one really gave a shit about him. Ooh, yeah. And then he came back, and I think he won his first fight back, and all his friends were there. And then he started going on that losing streak because he was getting towards the end of his prime. Mm. And all his friends kind of fell off. And the only ones that stayed were like a handful. But when he was successful and on top of the world, he had hundreds of friend, friends of who were just partying with him and drugs and loans and girls and this and that. And then at the end of it all, it was him and like five friends. And it's like, you can't, yeah. you can't assume that the people that are around and you, you and your success are for you. you They're just for your success. You pretty, much already ha- you pretty, pretty much already have them already. Everyone pretty much already has these people. Like you're not going to find them. Unless you're a little kid right now, like pretty much you got your core. Like yeah. you're not going to get a new core when you're 20, 30, 40. I mean, you can you can gain members and you can, I mean, there's things can happen. You can join a new group. I mean, there's all sorts of shit. Yeah, absolutely. Happen. But like the old G, the OGs like, but yeah, I mean, at the same time, sometimes the OGs aren't, don't turn out to be OGs. I mean, like you just were there. You weren't really there for me. Yeah. It's like, damn. And it's I've like, had to do something I was like there too. for you. Oh, like what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've had to do mm-hmm. some of that uh, recently, actually. Not recently, I mean, within the past year, where, like, you kind of take inventory, I guess, of, mm-hmm. like, who you s- associate with and figure out who's on the path that you're on, who's not, mm-hmm. and kind of gauge whether or not to put mm-hmm. energy into that. Mm-hmm. Because, like I was telling you in the last episode, I have a friend, quote-unquote friend, I have an, someone I associate with who's very just, he he's into doing nothing. He's very into he's very interested in doing absolutely nothing so you're like let's do all this stuff and he's like yeah i'm like yeah because like me i'm like you know let's go to let's go have a cigar at the cigar lounge let's uh let's you know let's talk about business let's just whatever anything anything. yeah anything and he's just like nah like nah i'm good i'm I'm gonna stay home play video games like no i don't really want to socialize and it's like i can't be around people that can't socialize and don't want to go out and don't want to do things because how the fuck am I going to grow if I need to be stuck inside playing a video game with yeah. you all day? You can't. Mm-hmm. You can't. Yeah, so it's like that's the friend where you're like, you can't, uh, I feel like you have to just be like, all right, well, I'm here for you if you need me, but I'm going to be over here doing this other shit. Yeah. Basically, like, mm-hmm. you can come with me if you want, like, you are you know, but it's like you're not, you don't want to. Like, okay, I'm not just going to, like, it's like, oh, dude, remember Super Bad? Did you see that movie? Tell me you saw it. Oh, my God, this guy. Maybe. Super Bad. Maybe. With uh, Jonah Hill, McLovin. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yes. The house party. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And I think at like the end or at some point he's like, he's like, I don't want to regret like wasting all my time with you or something. And he like, that's a big moment. He says like that real mean Oh, when thing. he's going off to college. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, I wasted all my time with you, man. And he's like, mm. damn, like I'm the loser who's like holding my friend back type shit. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I got out. And like, he's like your friend kind of, he's like, I got to level up. Because I am holding my friend back, and I want to join him up here in, or in the next growth area. You know, like we yeah. gotta move, we gotta keep going. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, it's like that. Have you noticed too? I don't know if everyone has this, but I've noticed it recently. I have like genres of friends based on what I'm trying to do. Mm. Do you have that same thing? Like, if I want to go out drinking and partying, I have a group. If mm-hmm. I want to go like have a cigar and chill and talk business or talk growth, I have a group. Yeah. If I want to just like. Do no, play video games? I have a group. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have like vi- the video. But there's games. not like one all-in group. Yeah, I guess that's true. Like I have a video games group, mm-hmm. but I don't really talk to them so much anymore. Like we have a group chat and stuff, and you know we still talk, but like they're on the ha- their headsets all the time and stuff. Yeah, and I'm just not in there, you know anymore. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, he's off being a monk somewhere. <laughs> it's like okay, well, I guess. Ah. But uh, I don't know. But it's like no, nah, not even. I mean, we still get along. We're all friends. Like it's yeah. fine. But um, but I'm just not there really anymore. And then like, I don't know what else. What are the other groups? Drinking friends? Yeah. Like, I don't do really you drink have anymore? Or... Really though. Yeah, like I, I would have... go out with them usually. I used to back in the day. I don't really. I'd have like a couple friends, like my one buddy. I'd go yeah, out with. He moved away though. Mm-hmm. And then like my, my work people, I'll drink with them. But like, ooh, that's not a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got like literally because I was I was taking inventory recently, and I'm like. I can't hang out with this, like the drinking group, for example. If I hang out with them, I understand that I'm absolutely 120% wasting that night in regards to growth. Mm. But you do also need time for yourself to socialize and to have fun. Because my life, I try and keep my life very busy. I want to do everything for growth, 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 growth. But sometimes you do need to like take the edge off. Yeah. So you, I have my take the edge off group. And then I have like, like you, me and you. We talk about 
the podcast. We talk about everything. But, like, you're one of the people that, like, you're actually one of the people that I can go out drinking with or talk about growth with. But it's different because I, I could talk with you about spirituality. That's what I, I could talk with you about spirituality. Oh, yeah. I can't That's talk about, shit. like, That's business or shit. money. But nah, spirituality, man. I can. You can and talk about drinking, that shit. I, can. I don't want to talk about that shit. You, you, don't, you don't like it too much. Nah, it runs me the I've wrong tried, way. I've tried a couple times, and you're like, like, the money doesn't matter. It doesn't. Like, well, it kind of does. No, 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 it doesn't. I'll talk to you maybe if I want to start doing real estate in the future, but I don't even know. Even that just makes me like, oh, ooh. We need money to give money out. We need <sighs> money to make people things happen. Nah, you just need to fix the minds of the people. They don't need money. They don't need money. If yeah. everyone's minds change and their hearts are full, then they're good. Then the money will just work itself out. The money's like, you know, secondary. Yeah. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. So don't focus on the money, money, money. Focus, let the money will come after. You can manifest money. Yeah, it'll follow you. It'll follow you. If you're doing what you love and, you know, spreading good shit, the money will just kind of follow Which that's you. a question that I had, actually, when back to uh, the power of now. Mm-hmm. When you manifest, you're thinking about your future. You're speaking about your future mm-hmm. as if it's right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I am this. Mm-hmm. But it's future. Mm-hmm. Future talk. So is that technically not being present or is that? Yeah, that's not being present. That's like. But uh, that's such a big thing in the spiritual realm, like success and all that. Not everyone agrees with it. Not everyone agrees with it. No? No. Some people are like, you know, like Taoism is very just like, don't be ambitious. They even say it right in the Tao. Like, don't ambi- be ambitious. Yeah. They're like ambition what is. What do you do? Ambition is lame, basically. So what do you do? You just go with the flow, man. That's uh, You just do what you do. That's it? Uh-huh. Zen is like that. A lot of the Eastern shit is just like, just do what you do. People are all like, I gotta go, 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 all this stuff. It's like a lot of people in the East who are like the wise, look at the old grandpas. They're just like, they just chill. Like they're just like, I'm chilling, man. I see you guys doing all that stuff. But like, or you see like the, the picture with like all the, all the rabbits running to work. And there's like the one uh, turtle on the skateboard, just like chilling, just like, yeah. Mm. <laughs> so what? So that so because in the east, right? In the east there are a lot of civilizations like villages. A lot older than ours. That's yeah. Sure. And a lot of them don't really don't really put the prioritization on physical materialistic shit. But in the west we do. Oh well, yeah. So we have more opportunity to also. I, f- I feel as though they are equally as happy if not happier with sure. no materialistic shit in the east. And then we're over here chasing the materialistic yeah, shit. That's how you know it's wrong, dude. But, but. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> but my thing is this. How do you. Do you not see it? How do you, how do you find happiness in nothing? And also f- people find the same happiness in everything. Who's finding the happiness in everything? What do you mean? Okay, it's the so same say, thing. Okay, let me say this. It's the same thing. It's the same happiness. It, no, it's but the same. But why is it two different things creating the same one, happiness? That's not two different things. That's the same thing. No, everything and nothing is not the same. They're literally polar opposites. Well, it's like two sides of the same coin. So it correct heads to tails. It's different. one coin. It is one coin because yeah. a person is the coin. All right, well you tell me. Anyway, what you think. tell me. What you think. So say your goal is to get a Ferrari. Material. Yeah, that's so say your goal is to get a Ferrari. Goal. Not my goal. It's and your goal. goal is to and like another person's goal is to live a happy life. Just live a happy life. Mm-hmm. And. And it has nothing to do with material things. Mm-hmm. The joy that that person gets from obtaining that the Ferrari in the moment is because you're chasing a thing and you reach a goal, extremely happy. Yeah, you're talking about the dopamine hit and all yeah. that. That's and then when you're yeah. when your happiness comes from nothing, mm-hmm. you're also happy. I guess here it's more you can maintain it well better than well, yeah, here. Yeah, because this is real and it's. Yeah, it's real coming from within. But, like, if I was to, you you have to, like, give yourself an injection. That's, like, an addiction compared to, like, that's, like, an addiction. It's just another addiction. I feel as though a goalless life is a wasted life. But you don't understand what you're talking about. (laughs) I feel as though a goalless life is a wasted life. Because. But I feel that a lot of goals. Because why? You have to explain why that's wasted. How could that be wasted? What do you mean? Because then you're not doing anything. You're not building towards anything. I feel like a lot of life okay, is wait. building. Are you saying you've never, everything you've done was because of a goal that you had set in your entire life? Everything you've done in the, and Not everything. How much of the stuff that's happened in your life was because of a goal that you set? A lot. How much? 
some okay. changes that you made about yourself. Yeah. Like everything that I do okay, has fine, an end fine. goal. Like I'm like, for example. All right. Well, anyway, tell me why having a goal is bad or whatever. Not having a goal is, is bad. Because then I feel like my biggest thing, right? Like my biggest thing is having a purpose and chasing the purpose and having goals and reaching mm -hmm. the goal. If you don't have goals, you're building towards nothing. You're already there. What if your purpose is just to influence the people that are around you at all times positively? Then you're always on your purpose 24 seven. You're not doing anything. But then at that point, and that, that's my thing, right? That's my thing. So if my goal was to influence people all the time, then what are you building towards? A You're just world. like what continuously. You no, 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 no. But that's a goal. That's not a goal that that's you're going to. That's an gonna... end goal. Okay, sure. That's a goal. But it's not So like... I'm saying like if the person's literally like a, a monk sitting there doing nothing all the time, meditating only. This is a test of the emergency alert system. This is only a test. If there were an actual emergency, the attention tone you just heard would have been followed by safety instructions to protect your life or property. This concludes this test of the emergency alert system.